Hi everyone, welcome back to JPWHU TV. It's nice to see you. I hope you're keeping well. This is the preview of West Ham's 15th home game of the 22-23 Premier League season. I did tell you you'd see me a lot of me over the last few next few weeks, where we welcome Newcastle United to the London Stadium for an eight o'clock kickoff live in the Premier League this Wednesday evening, live under the lights on Sky Sports. As always, this video is sponsored by the channel sponsor, 3retro.com. Please click the link in the description below that will take you directly through to the West Ham section of their website but as you can see from the icon that's up here there's also Newcastle gear in there as well along with track jackets, polo shirts, sweatshirts and t-shirts made by Admiral and Umbro in your respective club colours. So any purchases you make through the link in the description below, the commission that the channel would normally be getting I'll be sending directly on to Iron Supporting Food Banks, the very very noble charity that is based in the Newham area but is helping those in the Newham area and the Essex County and further afield for that matter to, to help people that are really struggling to put food on their tables in these very very difficult times. Um, on Friday night I was part of a 24 hour broadcast on the West Ham Network so thank you DJ Russ for inviting me and um, it was an hour conversation with myself James from E20 TV um, and also Yaz as well and uh, Gatesy and Craw uh, Craig <laughs> Sean Wetston um, where, we had, where we did the mass debate yes you heard that right the mass debate um, and it was and the, because those guys have been really pushing um, Iron Supporting Food Banks because they're it's a fantastic ch charity you guys that have been watching this channel for the last three or four years now I've to, well, at least two or three years now I've been saying that in every single video pretty much they are a fantastic organization so guys go grab yourself a really nice retro shirt or a very nice polo or track jacket whatever you're purchasing you'll be helping those the less fortunate than you and i than you and i i should say and you'll also be um getting yourself a few saving yourself a few quid in the process so as always guys let's start off by talking about the officials but before i do that because i keep forgetting in every single video i keep saying forgetting to say it there's Timestamps in the description below so you can, you can jump around wherever you want to go jump and make it much easier for you to watch whatever you want to watch. But the officials for this game, um, the referee is Craig Pawson. His assistants are Mark Perry and Scott Ledger. The fourth official is Chris Kavanagh. On VAR, we have David Coote and his assistant is Derek Eaton. Now, as we remember, this game was meant to be played on the 10th of September, but it was postponed due to the death of Queen Elizabeth II, passing away on the night of the 3-1 victory over um, uh, Stal Bucharest. Now, last time out, when we drew one all with the Geordies, it was at the 4th of February at St. James's Park with a disallowed goal within the opening 90 seconds, which was very, which because the ball, ball went over the line. And then Callum Wilson got on the score sheet within three minutes of the kickoff. And then Pakatar scored on the 32nd minute of the first half. It was, we all know, remember that watch along, guys. It was very, very nervy. Really, really tense game to watch, um, especially for the for opening five or six minutes. We were pretty shit then, as we, as we were... <laughs> as we were on Sunday night or last night, depending on when you're watching this uh, yesterday afternoon, I should say. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, yeah, there was, it was a tricky game and this is not going to be an easy one in any shape or form. Now our last six home games against the Geordie show, we've won twice, drawn once and lost three times. David Moyes' home record in the Premier League as a manager, he's against Newcastle. He's won six, drawn six and lost four. Newcastle at the cut time of this recording and our third after 27 games, we Winning 13 of them, drawing 11 and losing three, scoring 41 goals and conceding just 19 points. Oh, sorry, 19 goals, and they are currently on 50 points now. Of course, after our game against uh, Southampton on Sunday or yesterday, depending on when you're watching this, they went on and beat Man United 2-0 at St James's Park. Now, on the road of the 16 games they've played so far, the Geordies have won five, drawn six, and lost just two. They've scored 18 goals and conceded 10 on the road, and in their last five away games, they've won one, drawn three, and lost one. Now, Eddie Howe is a fantastic manager. You guys know that I've got a very big soft spot for, um, for Newcastle. Then they are basically the northeast equivalent of West Ham United in terms of the, the history and the background and the supporter base. If you're a Cockney or any a Londoner for that matter, you go up to Newcastle, they fucking love you. It's, and we love we love when the Geordies come down as well. They're great times when we get all, all socialised together. It really, really is really good fun. Um, but Eddie House's go-to formation away from home is 4-3-3, and I can't not see him doing anything other than this. So... 
you, I know you guys are going to whinge that my um, starting eleven um, preview, which we'll come up to in a minute. Um, I've gone very, very attacking, but you'll say, "Oh, it's five at the back." It's not. It's three at the back with with help in, in midfield because we need to, we need to be overloading the midfield and getting a very, very strong strike force out there as well. So we'll obviously come on to that in the in the um, West Ham section. But Newcastle's style of play is attempting through balls often, taking a lot of shots and attempting crosses often as well, controlling the game in the opposition's half, attacking through the middle, and they are very strong at attacking set pieces, creating chances through individual skill and creating scoring chances and they are strong as well at scoring from direct free kicks defending set pieces and aerial duels but they are weak at avoiding the offside trap which is one of the reasons why i do think three at the back is really really going to help us now on the road newcastle's highest goal scorer at the time of this recording is almiron but he is out until the end of the um out until the end of the month i should say due to a thigh injury but he has scored 11 goals on one assist on the on the road it's mental and their highest assister is Kieran Trippier, as no surprise, with six assists and one goal. Now, looking at other injuries, uh, Fraser is out due to a match fitness by the looks of it, but there's a probably very good chance to be back for this game, But he, as he has been playing with the under-21s. Kraft, I think you pronounce that, is out with an ACL injury. Neither have a proper return date as yet. Joe Willock is a doubt um, in, in this game due to a thigh injury, but knowing our luck because he's a doubt, he probably will be playing. Now, players to look out for, other than those we've already mentioned or, or those that are fit, um, Callum Wilson, Guillermo as I say, Joe Linton, um, St. Maximin, Dan Byrne, Joey Willock, Manquillo, they've got a very organised and much, much better balanced squad than we're used to playing against. So, and as I say, Newcastle, I aren't, I'm, I'm not in third for no reason. They play some very, very good football. And as I say, this is going to be probably one of the toughest games we're going to face towards the end of this season, bar the stereotypical top four. Yeah, it, it, I genuinely, genuinely think it will be. It's on telly, so I don't think it's going to be that much of an embarrassment, but the players really, really need to kick on. And that brings us around quite nicely to the section where we talk about the, um, for the Patreons, we talk about the... Um, Excuse me. We talk about the the opposition and the tactics that could be used. So, guys, if you want to become a Patreon, links in the description below. Maximum level is three pound a month plus VAT. That's it. You spend more on half a pint in London than you do supporting this channel for once a month. Do you know what I mean? But anyway, let's jump. Let's now go over to the section for the Patreons. Okay, guys, so let's talk about West Ham now. It was a big, big three points against Southampton on Sunday, who were piss poor. We weren't that much better, to be honest with you. If you haven't already done so, go watch the... Where well, is it going to be up here, isn't it? Go watch the um, full-time thoughts video that I did yesterday. Um, you know, we are one point above the relegation zone. Hopefully, after this game, we'll be two points above it. But you never know. There's obviously games going on tonight at the time of this recording, and because Everton are playing Spurs, if I remember correctly. And there's games going on Tuesday as well, um, but yeah, the big point, talking point, of course, was it was um, Gianluca Scamacca. Now, I think a lot of people are taking things out of context, as it usually is. Um, yes, it was. I've did a little bit of research, as I always do for you guys, and yes, he did leave the St London Stadium an hour before kickoff. Um, yes, that is massively worrying, but at the same point, guys, one of the reasons for that is down to the fact that. Um, it was agreed that he can he wasn't going to be in the starting eleven. Now, I do genuinely think we're going to lose Skamaka in the summer. I really do, just purely because of how injury prone he is. This is what his third injury long now. I mean, that's probably one of the reasons why he only had a few minutes out with Italy um, against England. Do you know what I mean? He's just, he's coming back from injury or he's at risk of having another one. Uh, do you know what I mean? It's just, I really, really do. I love the guy. I think he's a very, very talented for, sc striker and no doubt he'll be our, our, he'll be our starting striker um, for, for, Gent, uh, for, for Gent, Gent, I should say. Gent away next uh, week, next week? Yeah, next week, a week after next, whenever it is. Um, but yeah, it's going to be very, very tricky. But, you know, as I say, there there isn't any details of a, his return date. There's no other injury news from what I'm understanding, so it's great from that point of view, and which brings us on quite nicely round to the starting eleven section of the conversation now. And as I said, I've gone a three-five-two. I've I really really think that we need to go out as as defending defensive as possible and as attacking minded as possible. And I generally can't think of a starting eleven that's better than this. 
Areola in goal, with a back three of Kera, Zuma and Gued. Soufal and Emerson as the wing backs, with Rice, Pakatar and Benrama in midfield, supporting Antonio and Ings up front. So thank you very much for your time, guys. As always, put your comments in the comment section below. Do you agree with me with my starting eleven? And do you agree? Or if you disagree, let us know. If you, if you agree, let me know. Share this video if you have, if you've enjoyed it and you know other people that have, aren't aware of this channel because there are quite a lot of people. There are still a lot of people that aren't subscribed. So click that subscribe button and hit the notification bell and make sure you click the content to all as well for that matter. Um, and also please like this video if you've enjoyed it. But in the meantime, guys, thank you very, very much for your time. We'll have the full time thoughts on Wednesday night stroke Thursday morning um, after the game as always. Um, but in the meantime, enjoy the rest of your start of your week and I'll see you very, very soon. All the best now. Take care. Oh!